How is everybody this morning? Good. Well, we have uh, two of our worship service support teams that are at one of our tables. I think the one over this side. You can visit after the service. It's the uh, ushers and greeters and the Sunday Welcome Center hosts. Um, they're looking for volunteers and, and some help. And, and while you're here on Sunday morning, you can help out with them. It'd be a good way to, to be involved and to help and to volunteer uh, while you're here for worship uh, on Sunday mornings. And also, the Operation Christmas Child is an ongoing ministry all year with a collection box available in the Welcome Center. Now, they'll have an information sheet uh, on the gifts that you can donate. To fill this hundreds of boxes. And I think I was told 500 or so boxes a year yeah. are sent from the worship place. So I know you all want to be involved in that effort. There they are, a couple of opportunities, a few opportunities there for the to be a part of the ushers and the greeters and the Sunday Welcome Center host. Stop by those tables at the closing of the service to see how you can be involved in those ministries. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Appreciate it so much. Well, welcome to Bluegrass Sunday. That's our praise team uh, is going to be uh, Bluegrass group, uh, the Rocky Hollow Bluegrass Gospel Band today leading our worship. And so uh, we're going to give you a chance to greet one another here in just a minute. But if we have any first-time guests over in this section right here, would you raise your hand, please? We want to recognize you we like, today. We like oh, we to got some back there. Wow, three. Wow. Go get them, Christy. Okay. Hi, I'm Christy. What's your name? I'm Pete Dennison. Gloria Dennison. Kathy Dennison. Rick Dennison. There's Rick. Dennison's right here. Okay, so do y'all live in the area or? Okay, do you live in, in Sun City or in the area? Okay, and where do y'all live? Okay, fan well, thanks for coming all that way. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, we have a gift for our first time guest. There is our TWP mug, Yeah. and if you would uh, like to have one of those, we just ask that you uh, get that Connect card that is in the seat in front of you, fill it out, and uh, that way you can get information about all the activities that go on at the worship place, and also we have a place for prayer requests. If there's something that you want our staff and our prayer team to pray about, they will. Fill that out. Take it to the living room, which is our welcome center. It's the room with the couch. Hand it to one of our volunteers, and you, too, can have a worship place mug. We would love to. Okay, y'all raise your hands. Raise your hand. Okay, everybody look around. This, when we start welcoming, y'all need to come over here and say howdy to them. Okay? okay. Anybody else? All right, all right. Now, so you're scaring me. <laughs> okay, anybody else anybody on this else side? Anybody else on this First side? First time guest to Rocky Hollow. Right down here in the front, oh, Christy. Oh, on the front. Wow. Okay, but I bet it's the first time at first, first time, time at Rocky, at Rocky Hollow. Hollow. That's right. And I'm telling you, we're generous. We want you to have a mug. Okay. All right. I'm Christy. I'm Jeff Canode, and this one. Oh, she gets to say her name. <coughs> I'm Wanda. <laughs> she can talk. <laughs> okay. We, we offer marriage counseling after. <laughs> yeah, so. All right, all right. We are so glad you're here. Get your mug, okay? All right, do y'all live in Sun City? Okay. Great. Okay, but your first time Rocky Hollow, right? Well, thank you for Wonderful. coming. Wonderful. All right, anybody else? I saw another hand. Oh, hey. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> okay. You're, it's not your first time. Okay. All right. Anybody over? Oh, hey. I met this young man right here. I'm Christy. What's your name? Russ Walker. Russ Walker and? Patty. Patty. And where, where do y'all live? In 57. Na, uh, 57. Neighborhood 57. Anybody from 57 in here? 57, 57. There oh, they are. looky there. There's your neighbors right over there. All right. It's the party group. Okay, we'll be joining you. Okay, all right. So we. Okay, first time here. But if you want us, if you want a mug, you can fill out that card again. Okay, I'm great at giving mugs. I don't buy them, so I just give them away. All right. Anybody else? Oh, okay. Wow, this is fun. I'm gonna get roller skates like they have at Sonic. You know, I'll probably break a hip. But I'm Christy. 
David and Luann Schmidt. No. <laughs> Luann Schmidt. All right, thank you. She can talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do y'all live in Sun City or in the area? 59. Right. Okay, thanks, David. Thank you, Luann, for coming. We appreciate that. So we'd love for you to have a mug. Just fill out that card. Anybody else? First time? Oh, my okay. gosh, another one. All right. Great. Okay, I'm Christy. What's your name? Mira Klatzer. And where are you from? Do you mean where do I live or where? <laughs> where? Give me, I want to know where you're from because I don't know if you know it. You have, a, you have an accent. Just saying. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I just can't hide it. Christy. Um, I was born in yes, Chicago, right. partly, uh, but um, I lived in New York City for close to 50 years. And now I am in neighborhood 82. Ooh, neighborhood 82. Czech Republic, New York City, neighborhood 82. You've got a lot to live up to, neighborhood 82. <laughs> Just saying. All Give right. everybody a hand, would you? All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Well, we're going to give you a chance to greet one another. So if you would stand, turn around to somebody near you, shake their hand and hug their neck, and tell them how glad you are that they're here today. And we're going to do a little leaning on the everlasting arms. Y'all ready? One, two, three. I'm leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, what a fellowship, what a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning. To walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path rose from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, oh, leaning, safe and secure from all. seated thank you so very much this is our Rocky Mountain Bluegrass Gospel Band and uh, we want you to join us in singing we're going to add a few songs here as we go along and this one uh, is just over in the glory land I'm, I'm uh, biding time so I can get this cable on here and get this tuned up that sounds pretty close. All right, here we go. Y'all ready? Just over in the glory land. One, two, three. Have a home prepared where the saints abide. Just over in the glory land. To be by my Savior's side, just over in the glory land. Just over, over in the glory land. I'll join, join the happy angel band. 
so very much no. master's garden christy we're going to feature on this song and uh i like this this is a good one master's garden hey once you learn it you can start singing with me okay <laughs>
good. Thank you. Well, you know, this is Miss Betty Park right here, all right, and she is playing the fiddle in our band. You can't have a band in Texas if you if there ain't a fiddle or whatever. Somebody tell me what is that? So, can't play in Texas if you don't have a, can't play in Texas if you don't have a fiddle in the band. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. Right there. Well, we've got a fiddle, but you know what? Miss Betty is actually classically trained. I mean, she actually taught violin. She know she doesn't just play the fiddle, but she really can play the violin. And you know, there are some people who uh, professional musicians that they uh, they insure their hands. You know, like with Lloyd's of London, and yeah. and and I just want to know, Betty. Who, who do you think insures Betty? Who insures Betty? Do you know? I think Flo. From Progressive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. She did. She did. Give her a hand. Y'all do know the difference between a violin and a fiddle, don't you? What is it? A violin has strings, and a fiddle has strings. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, Miss Betty, that is beautiful playing. Is it really is. Enough? It's purdy. It's purdy. That's really purdy. But it ain't fast enough. So we're going to pick up the pace just a little bit. Y'all ready? Y'all sing. One, two, three. Now you sing along with us here. Oh, and the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore. And the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. If you would stand, we've got our scripture reading today. It's found in Hebrews 11, 9 and 10. Would you say it please as our ushers come forward at this time? By faith, Abraham went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to a city that is, has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. Terry, would you come lead us in a word of prayer, please, sir? Let's pray. Dear Lord, once again, we come to you and we give you praise and thanks for allowing us to be in your house again, to sing these songs of praise to you and be among your people. We pray as we hear your word opened up for us in a moment that we'd be ever mindful of your spirit, 
moving in us and around us so that when we leave this place, others would see you in us and come to know you and love you as we do. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Catherine, would you introduce this song? Yes, I will. <laughs> well, if you're back this month, we're going to sing Happy Till He Comes. That's right. <laughs> That's right. All right. One and two and one. Happy Till He Comes. I'll be happy till He comes. My soul shall rest in Him. I'll be happy till He comes. World, I'll be happy till he comes. Life down here is sinking sand, but on Christ the solid rock is where I stand. I'll watch and wait for him no more till I rise to meet with him. I'll be happy till he comes. Happy till he comes. I'll be happy till he comes. Souls to rest in him, I'll be happy till he comes. My new life is in his love. Not in man or in this world, I'll be happy till he His children, there's a better way. We're just pilgrims and strangers in a dry and barren land. Put your love on things above and be happy till He comes. Happy till He comes. I'll be happy till He comes. My soul shall rest on Him. I'll be happy till He comes. My delight in His law. Terry comes to preach, we're going to do a little song called Life is Like a Mountain Railroad. Here we go. A little choo-choo train sound there.
Savior, Thou will guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels there will join us in God's praise forevermore. Now as you roll across the trestle, I think you need to check your shoes for sawdust. We've been to one of them old-fashioned camp meetings, I think, haven't we? Do you know what? Those camp meetings are fun and they're exciting and, and you feel like you could just stay there forever, but we're not meant to camp out, are we? We're meant to be on the move. And our psalm this morning, Psalm 121, is one of these songs for travelers, one of these psalms for the pilgrim. So follow along as we read this, Psalm 121. It says, I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Now this Psalm 121 is part of a group of psalms in the book of Psalms from 120 to 134 known as the Psalms of Ascent. Now Jewish pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem for high holy festivals and feasts like the Feast of Passover or Unleavened Bread or, or Pentecost as we know it, Feast of First Fruits. Um, they would sing these songs on their way to Jerusalem. And it didn't matter from which direction you approached Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built on the top of a mountain, and the citadel was there at the very top. And so it didn't matter from which direction you came. You were ascending. You were always going up to Jerusalem. And as you read through these psalms, you can almost see and feel what these pilgrims saw and felt as they made their way to Jerusalem for these very special times of worship and sacrifice. Listen to some of these verses from some of these psalms. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Those who go out weeping will return with shouts of joy. Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. So come, come with us and praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. Lift up your hands and praise the Lord. And may the Lord bless you from Zion, he who is the maker of heaven and earth. You know, you will recall that when Jesus was 12, he and his family, they went up to Jerusalem along with a caravan of friends and relatives on a similar ascent for the Feast of Passover. We are told that they did this every year, and so their trip would not have been nearly as long as some who would have to brave weeks of travel to get to Jerusalem, but they no doubt sang these songs along the way in anticipation of all the events of the festival and the special times of worship as God's people gathered 
in and around the temple. How many of you like to take road trips? I do too. I like to take road trips. Any, anybody been on a road trip like this? Yeah. Does anybody have a ritual for their road trip? You know, when they're planning a road trip, getting ready for a road trip, there's certain things you do, certain things you have to have with you. Now, my wife, Shanna, when she gets ready for a road trip, there, there always has to be popcorn and Twizzlers on hand. And she always has her favorite tunes, road trip tunes, and those tunes are always opened up by Jimmy Buffett for some reason. <laughs> you have road trip tunes you like to listen to on the road? Um, now, any former Baptist in here, I know you never sang 100 bottles of beer on the wall, right? <laughs> well, we would sing the song, we just didn't pass them around, right? <laughs> you know, Willie Nelson wrote a song that I'm sure none of you ever sing when you hit the road, right? No one's ever guilty of saying, on the road again. You know, these psalms, these psalms were placed in a collection specifically for the pilgrim, specifically for the traveler on their way to Jerusalem. These songs would remind the traveler of why they had taken such a long and difficult journey and through song heighten the anticipation of the joy and the celebration and the worship that they would be experiencing when they finally arrived. But our psalm this morning, it takes an honest look at the road along the way. It acknowledges that the road can be dangerous and often distracting. Can you imagine traveling along this way? Verse 1 says, I lift my eyes to the mountains. You know, while the mountains and the hills could at times provide a place of refuge and safety, more often than not, the mountains and hills were a source of trouble and danger for the traveler. Robbers and bandits were known to hold up in the mountains, waiting for parties of pilgrims to waylay and rob. And moreover, the mountain tops all along the way were filled with shrines to pagan gods. And oftentimes there would be groves of trees that were purposefully planted along the way in order to lure travelers in with promises of rest from the hot sun and perhaps, for the right price, the answers to life's deepest questions. So verse 1 acknowledges these dangers and the psalmist then says, so where does my help come from on this dangerous way I must walk? And either answering his own question or someone in the procession with him answers up with with the, the saying, says, my help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. As if saying these very hills which are at once symbols of hope and danger are made by God, and nothing will pass to me unless it first goes through His hands. So that's where my hope lies, in the Lord. And what did Jesus say? I am in the Father, and you are in me. Nothing can snatch you out of my hands. Right? So then verses 3 through 8. Verses 3 through 8, they further explain God's protection and preservation along this way. You won't lose your footing, the psalmist says. Rocky mountainous paths are dangerous even without bandits. But the Lord will keep you from slipping off the path and falling into destruction. And while human watchmen may fall asleep, the Lord never sleeps or slumbers, the psalmist says. He not only watches over his nation, but he watches over even the individual traveler. So God is our keeper. He is our shade from anything and everything that might come to destroy us. Neither the sun by day nor the moon by night. You're coming in and you're going out, the psalmist says. And the psalmist uses this parallelism of opposites to communicate that God has got you covered. God has got you covered from one thing to the other thing and everything in between. From your going out and your coming in. You know, Paul said the same thing when he wrote, I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor heights nor depths 
nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, even Jesus spoke of two roads, didn't he? One straight, difficult, and narrow that leads to life, and one broad, easy, and wide that leads to destruction. Now, Jesus traveled, and he continues to travel on that narrow way of the sojourner. And he bids us to come and follow him on that way. The thing about following Jesus is that the road on which we follow him is more than simply a route from one place to the next. It is also the means by which we follow him. You remember, don't you, what those who followed Jesus were called before the term Christian began to be applied to them? Now that term, Christian, it was applied to them by their enemies. But those who follow Jesus simply refer to themselves as followers of the way. Or simply, the way. And that is that they followed the way of Jesus, the path that he marked out, the life that he taught us to live, this road that he walked and is walking on. That is their way and it is ours also. But once we found this way, once we have discovered this way and we're walking on it, how do we stay on it? Any of you familiar with Yogi Berra's sayings, known as Yogiisms? Well, I'll remind you, here are a few of them. Love is the most important thing in the world, but baseball is pretty good too. Baseball is 90% mental, the other half is physical. Okay? You can observe a lot just by watching. Now, the problem with these, you know, sayings of Yogi Berra is, is that I understand him. That's the real problem. Like, you know, if people won't come to the ballpark, who's going to stop them? Think about that one. You know, not long ago, on, on a tri- well, not long ago, but... Years ago, when Barra was on a trip with a friend of his, his friend said, hey, Yogi, I think we're lost. And Yogi said, yeah, but we're making great time. (laughs) You ever feel that way? Lost, but making great time? You know, many people around us are, are very close to that. They're lost and they're running out of time. You know, to avoid getting lost on a trip, what is, what is it good to have with you? What is it recommended to take along with you? A map, right? It's good to have a map. You know, when I first left home and was traveling around, I consulted maps frequently, often looking in the phone book if, if I were in an unfamiliar... Anybody remember phone books? You might have to go to a museum to find one, but in the back of, of many of those phone books, there was a section of maps. And I would frequently look at that section just to get my bearings if I were in an unfamiliar town or city. But now there's GPS to help us get lost. Do you ever take a long trip without a map and then take a wrong turn? Now, I know this happens to women a lot, but never men, right? (laughs) At least that's what the man would say. Um, You know, the psalm here promises that on this way we will never lose our footing. We will never make that wrong turn and get lost. Because on this way, God is with us and for us. He is on this way with us and for us. Listen, Jesus wouldn't call us to follow him on this way and then not give us directions, would he? He gave us directions. He gave us a map for this road, for this way of life, for this way to life. And it's here, isn't it? It's here for us. This is why we study this book. So that we can see this way clearly and experience these promises that he makes to us about being on this way with us and for us. Jesus called his followers to have this on-the-road kind of life. Now, occasionally he did sit down with his disciples. He would gather them around himself on a hillside or at a table. And those times must have been Very, very wonderful, good times. Can you just imagine what those times must have been like? Maybe a hillside or a lake shore. There's fried fish. Cool breeze in the air. And Jesus' words are hanging there in the air, slowly 
seeping into our hearts and our minds amidst the crackle of the campfire. Can you imagine how wonderful that would have been? You know, many of you might remember the scene at the Transfiguration. Peter wanted to hold on to that moment, that wonderful moment. And so he just declares, let's build some shelters right here and stay a while. But you know, Jesus' call to his followers is not gather around me and let's camp. It's not even really sit here and listen to me. But it's rather follow me. Follow me. And when you follow something or someone, doesn't it mean that that person or thing that you're following is on the move? Jesus' invitation to us is a call to take up the life of the traveler. To take up the, as, as though you're one living here temporarily, as though on a visit. You know, the sojourner's life, this way that we walk as we follow Jesus, is what the New Testament calls discipleship. Prayer, Bible study, worship, serving others, telling others about this way of life and this way to life. This is this way that we are on as we follow Jesus. And so where is this road leading? Where is this road taking us? Where is this place that we sing about while we're traveling? What is this place that God envisions as He calls us to follow His Son, living for Him as aliens and strangers and pilgrims on this earth. I can tell you that Google can't plot a route for you to get there. Garmin's GPS technology can't help you here. Even the old, rusty, trusty Rand McNally Road Atlas is utterly useless in plotting a course to this new Jerusalem. I want you to listen to how Scripture describes this place from Ephesians. Paul says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of His household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus Himself as the chief cornerstone. In Him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord, and in Him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by the Spirit. And Peter in 1 Peter says, As you come to Him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to Him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And in Revelation, John describes this place when he says, Let us rejoice and be glad and give Him glory, for the wedding of the Lamb has come and His bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. And one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, and I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And so he carried me away in the Spirit to a mountain great and high, and he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, and it shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of very precious jewels. You know, the reason for this description of the New Jerusalem is that it isn't a place we are traveling to in a geographical sense. The New Test, the, this New Jerusalem is a place that we are becoming. It's a place that we are becoming, and we become this place while on the way to this place. The road trip is the destination. The road trip is the destination. Following Jesus along the way that He teaches us to walk transforms us from being simply just a group of travelers to actually becoming His very people, His body in this world, His bride spoken of in Revelation, and His abode, His city spoken of in these other texts. This is the reason why you can't really go to church. Now, sure, there are buildings of various shapes and sizes around the country and the world, but if every single building that Christians meet in were to be completely destroyed, the church would still be standing. Amen? You can't go to church because you are the church. 
And so in a sense, we're not marching to Zion, to this new Jerusalem in a geographical sense, because we are at this very moment becoming Zion. We are at this very moment becoming this new Jerusalem. You know, the Exodus gives us a perfect picture of this, and of this not simply just the spiritual life of growth in Christ that leads to this promised land, but it's a picture of who we really are. Essentially, of who God is really is. We are a people on the move because the God we worship is a God on the move. We are aliens and strangers here because we're not really at home here. Our home is in Him. And if He is always on the move, if He is always on that way, then that's where we will find our true home, on that way with Him. You know, and I think Willie Nelson expressed the sentiment that we're talking about here for quite aptly when he wrote his pilgrim song. On the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. The life I love is making music with my friends and I can't wait to get on that road again. It's on the road again. We're going places that I've never been, seeing things that I may never see again. And I can't wait to get on the road again. On the road again. Like a band of gypsies, we go down that highway. We're the best of friends, insisting that the world keep turning our way. And our way is on the road again. On the road again who, with Him who is always on that way with us. So as Paul and the rest of the musicians come to gather around their instruments, that's, that's the call this morning. Is to have this mentality of the sojourner, of the traveler, on the way with God because God is always on the way. And if you've never started that way with Him, today may be the day to start that way. Well, maybe you've started the way and you've pulled off on one of those groves that was so enticing and you've decided to camp out for a while. God's kept moving, and so it's time to get back behind God and get on that way again with Him. Amen? Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank You so much for this way that You have called us on to follow You, and that the very way that You have called us to walk with You is the very way that You are making us into Your people. And we pray that as we faithfully follow You on this way, that others would get a glimpse of the destination in the way that we walk, so that along the way, others will get a glimpse of you in us and a glimpse of that place you have promised us and experience those promises even here and now along that way. It's in your name we pray. Amen. So much. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, we need to look forward to as Christians is uh, someday that road will end. We'll be going to heaven. Amen. And uh, that's what we're going to sing about is I'll fly away to glory. I'll fly away when I die. Hallelujah. By and by, I'll fly away to heaven. Let's all stand, please, as we sing this little parting chorus and uh, send you on your way. All right. Here we go. One, two, three. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away. Some glad morning when the sight is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's special shore. Great day. Have a great week. God bless you for coming. All right. I'll fly away. Oh, glory.
we are, while 